Welcome to my Adobe Lightroom Classic Masterclass. This nine part video series will teach you everything you need to know about editing photos in Adobe Lightroom Classic as well as the non-classic version of Lightroom. In this masterclass I will go through all of the different tools you will need to edit your photos in Lightroom. You will learn about tweaking the colors in your image, how to use curves, how to make local adjustments to your images, how to remove unwanted objects from your photos and a whole lot more. I will be using Lightroom Classic throughout this video series, but pretty much all of the editing features are the exact same in both the classic and the non-classic versions of Lightroom, so it doesn't really matter which software you're using, you will still learn how to edit your photos. However, there might be some features that I teach in this masterclass that do not exist in the non-classic version of Lightroom, but all of the editing features found in the non-classic version will be covered in this series. While creating this video series, I'm using Lightroom version 12, but I've been using Lightroom since version 5 and the basic things haven't really changed too much. So you can still use this video series if you're using a newer version of Lightroom. However, that being said, there might be some new features added, hopefully at least in the future too. So those features will not be covered in this series, obviously, because in this first part, we'll take a look at how to get started with Lightroom, how to get your photos into Lightroom and how you can rate and sort your photos and things like that. So let's jump straight into Lightroom Classic and get started. So this is the view when you open Lightroom for the first time. Basically, it's just a bunch of gray boxes with some text on them. This is the default catalog that Lightroom creates for you when you first open up Lightroom. Catalogs are basically projects inside of Lightroom. You can always create as many catalogs as you ever want to, but you don't ever need to create new catalogs if you don't want to. Now, before we can really do anything in Lightroom, as it says in the middle, you have to click on the import button to begin. Importing basically means bringing photos into Lightroom from your memory card, from your computer or from an external hard drive or wherever you have your photos stored in. So as I said, there's really nothing we can do in Lightroom before importing photos. So let's go over to the bottom left hand side corner and click on import. There are basically two ways you can use to import photos into Lightroom and one is using the built-in file browser in Lightroom. In here you can just click through the arrows to find the folder that you're looking for and if you want to include subfolders you can scroll up to the top and select include subfolders. But I actually think Lightroom's file browser is very clumsy so the second way you can use is to use the file browser of your computer and then just scroll through to the photos that you want to import, select them and drag and drop them into Lightroom. and. Now Lightroom has selected all the photos that you dragged into Lightroom, so I think that is a lot easier. Now if you want to do some further selection inside of Lightroom, you can also use Lightroom sorting by file type, file name, capture time and a couple more options. And you can also tweak the thumbnail size, so the size that the images are displayed at in here. Now to tell Lightroom which photos will be imported, you have to select them in here. So if you dragged and dropped photos into Lightroom, they will all be selected by default. But if you want to deselect some, you can click on these little boxes in the top left corner of the photo. Now you can also use the uncheck all and the check all buttons down here to select all of the photos or unselect all of the photos. And only the photos that have been checked here will get imported. So I don't think I need that in the end. And I also don't think I will need, uh, let's say this photo. So I'll uncheck them so they won't get imported into Lightroom. I could also select multiple photos by holding down command on a Mac or control on a Windows and then just click on multiple photos and then deselect them or by holding down shift and then selecting to select a bunch of photos at once and then deselecting them if I don't want to import them into Lightroom. Or the same thing if I don't want to import these all, I only want to import a few of these photos in this folder. So I'll click on uncheck all and then holding down command, I'll click on the photos that I want to import and then click on the box here. And now only these photos would get imported into Lightroom. But for this tutorial, I'll have everything checked. There's a couple of options here inside the importing window that you have to take care of. And the first one is here up top, and this is actually quite important. So this will tell Lightroom how you want to import those photos. So Lightroom will also give you an explanation right below the bar to tell you how it's importing the photos. But basically your options are to copy as a DNG, copy as is or move or add. So these are just different ways to import photos into Lightroom, but this is all personal preference. Now all of the other options except for the add option will also ask where you want to move or copy those photos to. So you can select that folder right here. And the add option doesn't ask for that folder because it's only linking to the original file instead of moving or copying a new version of that original file. 
file. So you're never doing anything to the original file with the add option, you're only linking to the original file. With move, you're actually moving the original file to the new location and with copy and copy as DNG, you're creating a copy of that original file to the new location. I usually use add or copy, but for this tutorial, I'm gonna use add because I want to keep them where they are, so I don't want to move them anywhere. And I also don't want to create copies because they're on my hard drive and I want to save some space. So I'll just use add to link between Lightroom and the original files. On the right here, you have this file handling tab where you can first of all build previews. And previews are basically smaller files that Lightroom creates from your images so that Lightroom can use those previews instead of the original files while you're scrolling through your photos so that it doesn't have to do as much work and it will work a lot smoother. So usually I would create a standard site preview at this point. Now, even though it will take a bit of time to create those previews at this point, it will save so much time in the end. So it's really a smart move to do at this point of the process. Now you can also select to build smart previews, which will basically let you edit your photos, even though they aren't on your computer or if your hard drive that they're on, isn't plugged in, so you can still edit the photos with smart previews. Here in file handling, you also have add to collection and collections are basically folders inside of a Lightroom catalog. And here you can add your photos that you're importing to a collection and you can also create a new collection with the plus icon here. So let's create a new collection called, I don't know, tutorial, because that's what this is. And hit create. And now all the photos that I import into Lightroom at this stage will be added to that tutorial collection or folder. And you can always create new collections if you want to later on as well. So you don't have to do it right here. But if you want to stay organized, I think it's a lot smarter to create collections while importing because you always know what you're importing at this point instead of having a million photos inside of one collection. Now in here, we also have an apply during import panel where you can add some develop settings, which are basically preset edits that you can add to your photos something I would never do. And you can also add some metadata. So for example, keywords for tutorial and Lightroom. And now these keywords would get added to all of the photos that I import at this point. But you can also do all of this later on. So I really wouldn't touch the apply during import panel at all ever. But if for some reason you want to, I'm not saying you can't, I'm just saying, I don't think it's useful. So let's just undo all of this stuff and leave the apply during import panel blank. Now, if you really like the settings that you have going on here in your import panel, you can create a new import preset from all the way down here. But importing really is a very straightforward and fast process. So I don't think you ever need to create an import preset. But if you want to, you can do it in here. But now that we have our photo selected and we have a collection created, let's click on import. Okay, so now we have our photos in Lightroom and this is called the library module. So up here you have your library, develop, map, book, slideshow, print and web modules. And throughout this tutorial, we'll be only using the library and the develop modules. Now the library module is where you can browse through your photos and your collections. You can tag your photos with stars or colors. You can add them to new collections. You can add keywords and do a lot more. But basically the library is the album of all of your folders and all of your photos. Now after clicking on import Lightroom will automatically open to the previous import catalog, but you can go to all photographs or the collections that you've created from the left hand side panel. Now there's also a folders tab here and a publish service tab down here, but you don't really have to worry about either of these. The folders tab will show all the folders on your computer that you've imported photos from and publish services will let you publish your edited photos straight to different services like Adobe Stock straight out of Lightroom. But as I said, you don't really need these, so I'm going to close them both down. Now to open or close tabs, you can just click on the names or the little arrows here and to close these like full sidebars, you can click on these little arrows on the sides as well as down here and up here. Here. So you can get more screen real estate if you need to, or you can show more things if you want to. You can also close both the right hand side panel and the left hand side panel with the tab key on your keyboard to show all of your photos just nice and clean. And you can do the same thing for the tabs in any of the other modules as well. So just the same thing as in the library. So on the bottom of the library panel, you have a few different viewing modes, which you can click on to view your photos in a different way. But the basic one is the grid view where you can see all of your photos. Now, if you want to see them larger or smaller, you can change the thumbnail size from the bottom right here. And from this little arrow, you can open up a menu where you can customize the bar down here. If you double click on any of your photos, you can view it alone. And if you press G on your keyboard at this point, you get back to the grid view or you can also use the bottom down here. 
and to view the photo that you've selected alone, you can also click on this little box here or hit E on your keyboard. Now, when viewing a single photo, you can click on I on your keyboard to view information about the photo, like the file name or the resolution or the settings that you use to take the photo. Now, going back to the grid view, if we have multiple photos selected and we click on N on our keyboard or this little button down here, we can view all of the selected photos at once. And in this view, if you hover over a photo and click on the X, you can actually remove that photo from the selection that you have. And this way you can kind of go through photos and select the ones you like the most out of a bunch of photos. If you click on F, you can view the photos in full screen. And if you click on L a couple of times, you can view only the photos and dim out everything else from Lightroom. Also with a photo selected, if you click on V on your keyboard, you can make that photo black and white and then click V again to make it colorful. And the same thing goes here in the grid view as well. So clicking V will make the photo black and white and clicking V again will make it colorful. But I would never do the black and white transformation in the library module, but I would go to the develop module because I have so much more control over the black and white edit. But this is just a quick way to view the photo in black and white if you need to. And with a photo selected, you can click on the numbers between one through five to set a star rating for that photo. And if you go higher to the numbers above Five, you can add colors to the photo selected. But to set a color, you can also go down to the spray paint can here down on the bottom, click on that and then select the color you want to paint. And then you can click and drag over your images to paint those photos with that color. And if you don't have any color selected, your spray paint bottle will turn gray and then you can kind of undo the colorings you have for your photos. Now, if you open up a photo, you can also make it a select or a reject photo with the flags down here. So this is selected, this is rejected, or you can also use P on your keyboard or X on your keyboard. Now you can also have photos selected. So for example, let's select these and open up the keywording tab here. And then I can add keywords to this. So beach, water, for example, and then hit enter to add those tags to these photos. But personally, I only ever use the stars and the colors to sort through my photos because I find that to be enough for me. But there are plenty of ways for you to rate and sort and flag and tag and keyword and everything like that to your photos if you need to. Now, once you've rated or tagged or flagged or colored your photos, you can use these filters up top to sort the photos that you want to. So for example, I can go to attribute and select rating that is equal to three stars. And now I can only see the photos that I've rated as three star photos. Now you can also mix and match these filters. So if I wanted to have three star photos that are also tagged with the color red, I could do that, but I don't have anything like that. And if I want to get out of this filtering system, I can just click on whatever I have active and that will take me back to the grid view without any filters selected. Now you also have the metadata filter. So you can filter photos with the camera that you used to take the photo or the year you took the photo in or the lens you used or a lot of different metadata from the actual photo that you've taken. So if you have a massive catalog and you only want to see photos taken with a drone in 2020, you can do that from the metadata filters in here. Now, one more thing you can do here in the library module is you can rotate photos in the grid view by clicking on these little arrows here or by double clicking on the photo, you have the same arrows here below every photo in your catalog. Now the right hand side will show some information about your photos like the metadata and the histogram of the photo. And you also have a quick develop panel here, but I would never use it because why are you even using Lightroom if you're only gonna apply a quick develop? Because the develop module or the editing module of Lightroom is really where the key of Lightroom lies in. So there's no point in my opinion to use the quick develop, but you have that there if you want to. So you can apply a preset from here if that's something you would ever want to do. But personally, I wouldn't. But now that we have our photos imported into Lightroom and sorted out the way we want to in our library, we can actually move on to editing the photos. If there's any questions you have about the library module or anything we just went through here in the first part, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. But that is all for the first part of my Lightroom Classic Masterclass. And I hope I will see you in the next part where we get to actually editing the photos. Shoo!